Worship, we can work through this in the order of the memo. So how about you go to the easy one, which is dogs around skate parks? Perfect. <laughs> So in the uh, memo, um, we've proposed that dogs be on leash around skate parks. The animal control team haven't come across any issues with dogs on skate parks currently uh, in the history of recent years. We... Oh, looks like. Sorry, sorry about that. I'm on. A, I'm on a, a call here. Can I get the deputy mayor to handle it for uh, five minutes, please? Yep. Yeah. No, I was just about got the drift of that. Uh, right. So, uh, Jack Church. Thank you. Um, yeah, because I guess I just want to pull it up. Um, I, I had thought about it because I, I read what you said, which I thought was really valid, Tracy. I guess I thought of skate parks as a genre as being similar to the playground area, like. Um, while well, you've got the playgrounds at being 10 metres back but and on lead, um, I would have thought just that, that just as a, we don't want dogs running in and out or pooing in them when people are going to be skating in them later and they're like sports fields where we don't want that, that sort of behaviour either. So I just wonder whether we just pick, up, pick them really up, all up how we do um, the playgrounds and the sports fields. Because like they're basically a prohibited area to, of use, and obviously if it's a setback, whatever that setback is, yeah. Is okay. Yep. Do you want a response to that? Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, we can. I mean, we can set these rules however we feel that we want as direction from council here. Um, on the ground, we often do see dogs um, contained in some ways. The family takes the dog down to the skate park and ties it up um, generally to the fence. Uh, and the family and the kids enjoy the skate park. Uh, mm. And we haven't had issues with that in the past. Um, historically, I guess generally the kids also at the skate park have been older. Uh, at the playgrounds often we get toddlers and babies and prams uh, that we definitely don't want dogs interacting with that are not under control. The, to the best of my knowledge, uh, none of our skate parks are in a off-leash area, uh, which means that they must be on lead when in or around skate parks. Um, and our wording, I guess, doesn't make it clear. We don't want the dogs on the skate park. That's why we've said the one metre dogs to be uh, on leash one metre from the skate park. Mm. So maybe our wording could be clearer around that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if the one metre works, as you say, I, I imagine we don't want them on it, but we don't actually say we don't want them on it. We're just by inference because it's around it. So, yeah, just trying to get a consistent word. But, yeah, I, I'm comfortable by the way. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Cedric. Thank you. Um, Tracy, just a, a couple of points there. I don't have a problem with the one meter on the skate park. Sometimes you have a skate park quite close. I'm thinking in Tiko Fata where the skate park is relatively close to the playground. Um, and I would think that 10 meters from the playground would probably get you to the skate park anyway. Um, I would be reluctant to tie my dog up 10 meters away from where I was on a playground because I wouldn't be able to get to control the dog by voice if kids were running past it. It seems to be a very big area. I would rather have my dog a little closer uh, where I could keep more of an eye on it. But whatever way you decide, and I'm not gonna die in a ditch on it, I think the importance is to have really good signage, really, really clear signage, because in my experience, I see people in the playgrounds with their dogs on a lead, hopefully, um, and pretty, pretty close by. So I think we have to figure out what works for people. Have there been many incidents of dogs in playgrounds issues? Have we had that? Uh, there are, have been a couple that I know of off the top of my head. Um, I would need to do some more digging to find out if there's more than those couple that I know about. I was just thinking if a dog was tied up 10 metres away, you really don't have control of it and kids could run past it. Correct, yes. That's my thinking. But, um, but good signage, please. Yep. Okay, thank you, Councillor Smith. Thank you. I'm just looking for consistency here. We're taking maps out uh, of the bylaw. It's been recommended. 
and we've all agreed on that because um, they were, what is it, on lead areas or whatever, but in reality, they should have been on lead areas and we don't need maps to tell us that. So we've just heard uh, Tracy talk about the skate parks uh, generally within, as I understand it, uh, on lead areas anyway. Uh, and so why are we going now differentiating and going inconsistently with what we've done with the maps? So the, the reality is, let's just be stronger about if you've got a dog out in public, it's on a lead, end of story. So whether it's one metre from a playground or 10 metres from a playground or one metre from a skate park, it doesn't matter. It's on lead. Uh, and I think, what are we trying to do? Because if we're then saying one metre from a playground, uh, from a uh, skate park, what are the other exemptions that we don't know about? So let's just make it simple. It's on lead, end of story. Yeah, can I just clarify then, uh, you, so Councillor Smith, you'd be happy with a dog that was um, um, tied up to a piece of playground equipment? That's not what I said. What did you say? I said they're on a lead. Uh, you know, they're on a lead. So, you know, if you want to go, um, you, can, you can be silly about it, Axel. Um, the reality is I wouldn't expect any uh, dog to be tied up to a playground equipment if a child was able to use that playground equipment. I'd expect it to be tied up to a fence or a tree or something else, but not play, you know, <laughs> you can be oh, pedantic on this. Yeah, well, I'm not trying to be pedantic, but I'm just trying to think of that we, we, we do have a, an issue here. Well, we have a strong preference that we don't want dogs on the actual playing surface, you know, where the equipment is and so on, because even a dog that's small and well-mannered and, and wouldn't hurt a soul, according to the owner, can still frighten other small, you know, small absolutely. children. Absolutely. I'm totally behind that. So yeah. if there's some clear way, but, you know, like I think we need to absolutely reinforce it's if on a lead, if you're in the public place, parks, you know, cemeteries, playgrounds, skate parks, whatever. Um, if you want to set distances, um, setbacks in place, that's a different issue in my view. Okay, any other comments or speakers? Uh, Shelley, I'll go to you. You can pick up on Council Smith. Thank you, mate. <laughs> no, um, uh, no, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, Councillor Smith, you raised time around the playgrounds in the last couple of years. Um, uh, Councillor Sedgwick's right, we need big signage and much more prominent signage. I have five dogs running around Pukaturini, miles ahead of the owners, loose. Um, the amount of dogs that are on leads is minimal in the, in the whole reserve. And I watch these people go past every day, all day and there's very few dogs on leads, and there's groups of dogs, and not everybody appreciates dogs rushing up to them. And as far as the playgrounds are concerned, yes, I have been around the playgrounds and the dog is tied to the playground equipment because it's a safe dog, the one who you, except when it nips you in the heel. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I'm not sure where we're landing on this. Uh, Sue? I, th I think it's getting a little bit complicated when we start differentiating between a skate park and a playground. At Tamahiri, we've got them both adjacent to each other, and I can't see why we can't have a rule that says it's 10 metres from either. Um, that makes it very easy for a dog owner to know. They don't have to learn two or three different measurements. If you've got kids on a playground that you're supervising, you shouldn't be trying to look after your dog at the same time. Um, that's my opinion. And kids whizzing around on skateboards, that's a, a surefire thing to get a dog excited with things on wheels coming and going and moving around and jumping. Um, I just don't think it's the right idea to have them any closer. So let's, let's just keep it simple and have one rule for both. I think it's certainly true, Sue, that in the, and I'm not sure what's generally the case, but 10 metres from a playground would take out half the skate park at some here anyway. That's right. Because <laughs> they're immediately next to each other. I'm not sure if that's common or not. But, uh, perhaps staff may want to comment on that. Uh, is there generally a playground immediately adjacent to a, um, a skate park or they tend to be standalone? 
tend to be standalone or a, a reasonable distance between um, the ones that I can think of. You've made your point there, Sue. So basically, one rule to keep it simple, and I think it's your, yeah. your main point. Uh, Councillor Wilson? Yeah, I'm of the opinion that um, if you say a dog's on a lead, you basically, that's then attached to someone's hand. Uh, you're watching your children. I've got no problem with that. You're sitting down. You're watching them play. Um, you, you start playing. You're watching them. You're patting your dog. You might go for a little walk or whatever. But if you go 10 metres from the playground, well, then you run the risk that you're no longer watching your child. So it's, it's sort of we're running around in circles here. We're, um, the, the, to me, the decision is dog's on a lead. End of story. And, I mean, if it poos, well, you pick it up. So um, that's, Yeah. Okay, so I'm not sure there's a consensus emerging here. Um, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, save me. Have you have you heard anything that from an enforcement and a monitoring point of view makes sense here? Is there a thing? I think there's probably difficulties in terms of enforcement, which we've always got to be mindful of. Um, and, you know, we, we're not proposing to increase staff numbers exponentially to catch everyone walking around the lake, for example, with their dog not on lead. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it is a bit of a tricky one. Um, I think there is possibly some merit to the concept of on lead in a public place um, and keeping it simple because, again, with enforcement and 10 metres away from um, or one metre away from, um, then it, it, it adds another layer of complexity in terms of figuring out whether that person was nine metres or 11 metres, for example, um, from an enforcement perspective. So, I, I mean, look, I don't have a... Um, I have a strong opinion either way. I just feel like there's probably a little bit of um, common sense to the just general on lead approach. Um, that's, that's all I've got for you. I'm sorry. And, and we could we could say and not on playgrounds. Yeah, not on playgrounds or skate parks themselves. Um, you know, uh, that would necessitate a change because I believe we've currently got 10 metres from a playground. So I suppose as in addition to the question in front of us here, which is, um, about skate parks in particular, do we also want to remove or amend a ground rule would be the question that we open up with that. Well, so I'll, I'll invite comment on that and I'll go to the two with hands up at the moment. But so let, let's narrow down the question here. So we're basically saying for simplification and uh, avoidance of confusion, um, a simple rule of on leave at all times in a public place, unless in a signposted off leave area, and not on playgrounds and skate parks themselves. So how does that sit with people? Uh, Councillor Church. Yeah, excellent. I, I think that's the right way of going. I was actually just going to add in the, because I haven't brought up, but a lot of the council brought up around the actual sports grounds. And I know we've got a few exceptions, but let's say the rugby and playing fields, the soccer fields, to me, it's the, that's the thing. To me, the, the sports fields, the skate parks, the play parks, all on lead except no dogs allowed on the sports fields or all within, say, let's say five metres of a skate park, play park or sports field. Because I think those, because those the other one that, and it's just, a, a, and this is an exception to that we've got because we've got the same issues where, yes, you could, maybe, I don't want to confuse it with the, because you've got a one in 10 at the moment, but maybe five metres means that you could be still at a rugby game and have your dog and then still watch your kid play rugby, but not have a dog close to the to the boundary lines of the sports field. Same with the play park and same with the, um, it's only five steps. Same with the play park and same with the skateboard park, but gives a bit of consistency as to how far and which things we really don't want dogs on. Yeah, I think we're, though, in danger of reintroducing the clarity which we just sought to get. Um, uh, we'll come back to the sports fields. That's a, a, a different topic we haven't come to yet. But, um, yep, okay, your point is noted. Uh, Councillor Thompson? Um, I agree with the on lead um, around the skate parks. I mean, it's really hard to say 10 metres or 5 metres around the skate park. And, actually, I've seen dog skateboarding. So... Um, so I, I have. I've seen the dogs on skateboards and I've also seen people who've got their dogs and their dogs running in 
and they've got the lead and they're on the skateboard and they're going around the skate park and they do quite a good job actually. So it'd be quite hard uh, to uh, manage, uh, you know, from five metres or 10 metres. So I, I just think it's skate parks and um, they're on lead. Unless they're registered skaters themselves, right? Thank you. Got that. It's a, of course, yeah. that's right. They could be gold medalists, so, you know. That's right. Uh, Miss Anson. Yeah, hey, look, um, I've missed the thrust of this, but I'm assuming it's about the dogs on leads in public places, uh, skate parks, playgrounds and things like that. Look, I've been around dogs all my life and, and um, my daughter's got two little dogs um, that probably haven't got a mouth, a mouth wide enough to nip anybody, but it doesn't mean to say they can't. Um, and I've always said that dogs in a public place should be on a lead. But the simple fact is, and I've heard this a thousand times, a dog's running loose, he'll run up to you, doesn't matter whether you're running around one of the lakes in Huntley or something like that, and they yell, oh, dog won't hit you, dog will be all right. But it's all too late when the dog bites you because you don't like being bitten or you just don't like dogs full stop and react in a strange way. So I think to protect both the public and the person who has the dog, and I don't mind dogs walking around walkways either. I don't have an issue with them. As long as they pick up what they drop behind, I don't have an issue. As long as they're on a lead. Because once an incident happens, Tracy and a team are then called into action, wouldn't it be a hell of a lot easier just to keep the dog on a lead and cut our workload down uh, for the team? So I think it's important. doesn't matter where you are within the district. If you're off your own patch or not on a dog run, free run area or on somebody's farm, keep your dog on a lead. And everybody be a hell of a lot happier, whether you're a dog lover or not. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much the space we're landing in from, from the comments so far. Uh, Councillor Cedric. Oh, that is that is exactly what I was going to say. I think you landed quite neatly uh, before, and I don't think our job is to be nanostate and to make such differentiating rules that it becomes almost impossible for people to understand and impossible for animal control to, to try and work out whether it's four and a half metres or one and a half metres away. So the simpler, the better, and I think you, you nailed it before, if you can remember where you were. Uh, that's why we're recording it, uh, so I don't have to remember. Right, so I think we've got clarity on that one. Tracy, you happy with that? Sarah, please nod. Thank you. And uh, so I'll hand back to you, Mary Ellen, for the second one. No, I was going to suggest you carry on because I'm doing something else now, so I'll listen in. <laughs> I'm trying to do other work. All right. All right. I've been doing this all day, so I'll let you have a go at it. Uh, thank you. It's, uh, Tracy, next point to be considered. Okay, um, well, let's, since we're in the on-leash area, my first point was the removal of the on-lead areas from the maps. Um, shall we discuss that? Uh, unless somebody wishes to, thank you, Councillor Smith, can always be relied upon. Um, I, I think there was broad agreement for that anyway, but uh, Councillor Smith. Yeah, I was just gonna make sure that nobody tried to overturn what we're trying to do because Fodder Fodder and Te Kofi absolutely don't want to be playing in the shit. Um, excuse me, but that's exactly what this is all about, and it's we've had enough. So I don't want anyone to suggest otherwise. Please, thank you very much for the opportunity, Councillor Beck. <laughs> I think you're on the wrong topic. We're not on that one yet. No, that's one I thought you said. No, um, no so we're. Um, um, well, why don't you go to that? Because it started. <laughs> well, let's let's stick with the one we've got. Uh, Jan, Councillor Sidri. Uh, Councillor Smith has encouraged me to lose my train of thought. Apologies. Apologise for that, Jan. <laughs> no, so effectively, we what what I think we're saying for clarity is that rather than say this area is on lead, uh, when actually we mean everywhere is on lead except we're off lead. Let's just say where is where is off lead, right? That's that's really the thrust of this, uh, Councillor McGuire. Yeah, the changes to the map, I fully support. Um, yeah, I um, su support the um, Martingi aspect of it, Tim Harry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Council Church, so we're just really talking about the maps at the minute yeah. in terms of the removal of one lead. 
yeah, 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 I understand. So yeah, just for clarity, because I kind of got on the, I got down the rabbit hole of the policy and the bylaw and then the maps and then the old and the new. So just to make 100% sure, the maps that we're proposing are only going to have the yellow dots where it's the prohibited playgrounds on them and the on the off lead the off lead exercise leash leash areas on those maps. None of the town centres, except the ones where it's Narawahi and Huntley, as I understand, who want to have prohibited areas. The rest will be basically quite blank maps. Is that is that my understanding of the maps? Yeah, that's the intention yep. for clarity. Yeah, yep, cool, great. Yeah, I'm on that page. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. You change your mind. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Back to you. Can, can I just have clarity, please? Because I'm looking at bullet point one or the question one: removal of on-lead areas. And yep. so that is the topic that I am talking about. That it only affects three areas according to this third paragraph: Fodafoda, Te Kofi, and Te Kafara. No other area. Is that is that correct with what's said there? Because what I've heard is somewhat confusing. Uh, we, we're going to consider uh, separate. So Hannah's back now. We're going to have to consider separately uh, what we do in terms of um, reserves and playing surfaces. We, we're really just at this point limiting the conversation to um, uh, we'll split it into half, if you like. So we're just talking about how do we communicate clearly uh, by by way of maps. So we haven't come to address yet the second part, which is those particular playing fields, but actually goes wider than that. We'll, we'll discuss, I suspect, all playing surfaces. But for, for the moment, in order to communicate clearly to the public so that I can clearly understand what the rules are, the suggestion is we only have two things marked on maps where you can't have dogs at all, which is certain town centres, playgrounds, skate parks, etc. And sports and, fields. Well, we haven't come to that part yet. We haven't discussed that yet. I'm sorry, I have, but I'm, I'll let you catch up. <laughs> or <laughs> thank you. Or um, a, a green area, if you like, which is a which is a marked off lead area. So there's only two kinds of things on maps for clarity, because otherwise we'd have to go through every town and every district and every rural area and, and talk about is it on lead, is it off lead, is it whatever. So it's if it doesn't say it's on lead only. Hannah, yeah. welcome back. Uh, through the chair, I just wanted to respond to Councillor Smith's question briefly. So the reason why only those three reserves are noted in the memo um, is because they are sports fields, so they're directly affected by the on-lead change. Um, yeah, so those, that's why those ones are directly mentioned. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Sands. Well, more of that. Oh, here where I am. Hey, can, so can obviously... Uh, when you miss a bit of a, a workshop, you sort of miss a little bits and pieces have gone by hand. So something count, I heard Councillor Church say in relation to dogs in town. So um, so no dogs in town in Huntley or um, Narrow here, obviously. So everyone's nodding. So I've got that bit right, uh, except in the event of uh, Huntley, but not so much Narrow here now. It's taking a dog to the vet, being a nexus in the main street. Okay. So uh, are those councillors that are in the other towns of Raglan, Tuakau, Pocono uh, and TK happy to have dogs in their, in their main streets? Is that what I'm reading here? You do realise that not all dogs come in handbags? Right. Mean, meaning dogs come in other sizes um, and not necessarily blunt teeth? Mm -hmm. Because I have seen the outs upside of this and this is why this was put into policy a number of years ago, because of certain sector of our society that thought it was cool to walk their mongrel on a chain and intimidate everybody down the street. Now, once you let this go, you've got it forever. Not all dogs come in handbags. The first time I saw that in Vienna, I laughed my bloody head off, to be honest, to see dogs in handbags. But they have them over there, though, but I don't see them in New Zealand. So just be aware of the downsides. Once you let this cat out of the bag, you've let it out for good. And I've seen dogs on lead in, in Ragland uh, and last, and most of them have been little cuddly things or the odd Labrador, but, but just realise once you let that out, they're not all cute and cuddly. Just be aware of it. Marilyn, can I perhaps help in terms of to co um, When we had this consultation some years ago, there was a specific, there was a specific request 
to allow dogs on leads in the main street. Uh, and that has worked extremely well. Um, and I welcome also the removal of that map in the main street, uh, which currently prevents, well, suggests you can't go take your dog to the vet. So um, talking about a specific area, uh, Takofa is very comfortable to have dogs in the main street on leads as it is to have dogs in the rest of the streets on leads. Um, one point I wanted to make, and I th think that was where I was earlier, uh, and just in mentioning uh, dog exercise areas, there seems to be a confusion in the document talking about Tokofota uh, domain and Tokofota sports fields. It would be helpful if you could refer to it as the Tokofota dog park. Um, otherwise, I can see people saying, ah, well, I thought it meant up here. Um, and actually, it's a very clear, very clear place at the beginning of the, um, of the sports field. So uh, that was the point I was searching for before and which eluded me. Thank you, Council Smith, it's come back. Okay, look, that's, that's all right. And I don't mind that. I'm just reminding you all of the, the flip side of this going forward and considering a lot of these communities and the fabric of these communities and, and TK is a classic, is changing. Um, and, and I'm just, just when something goes wrong, just remember this conversation we've all had here. That's all I'm saying to you. Thank you. I'll leave you in peace now while I sit and do some more work. Uh, thank you, Carolyn. I'll come to you. And um, Jan, you still got your hand up. Yeah. Um, I understand the concerns that is worships raised, and those have been in other communities as well where they've um, allowed dogs in town centres. But one of the most important things with dog ownership is being able to socialise your dogs. And the more people socialise their dogs and the more they... Um, interact one is the dogs are more likely to be registered two um you know there's plenty within the um dog legislation animal welfare legislation around um aggressive dogs or you know those that need to wear a muzzle and stuff like that so there's other provisions still with that i mean i've got family in the uk and when you go there dogs are now even allowed in department stores and they all go to pubs and um you see a high degree of good dog behaviour and good owner behaviour. It's predominantly the owners we're talking about, not the dogs at the end of the day. And the more that people um, engage with their dogs and socialise and realise that they are part of the community and they're behaving, um, we can only hope that it will um, encourage the right behaviour and not the wrong behaviour. Um, and certainly I, I'm not aware that it's caused significant problems in other towns. So... Um, no, I'm fully supportive of it because um, a lot of people now have, you know, live close to their town. And in order to get to some of the recreational areas, they need to walk through town if they're not going to drive. So if we're going to encourage exercise and activity, then um, actually exercising with your dog and so is part of that. So, um, yeah, I mean, if we I, I hear what you say, Alan, about the risks with um, safety. But if we took that risk, we'd also ban cars from the road as well. Um, because of the number, you know, number of people that get killed on the road every year. Well, if you saw what I saw, nearly every time I walked down Harris Street in Huntley West, somebody with a mongrel dog would chew your leg off if you hopped out of the car on a chain down Harris Street. Do you really want that in your main street? I think you've been a bit naive, Carolyn. Well, honest. then you report that to animal control. And no, animal control what's to report? What's it's on a lead. What's to report? That's what I'm saying. You keep it there. You don't let it into the street and intimidate the old people. Okay, no. let's let's keep moving on. We've got um, three more points after this yet to decide. So, <laughs> thank you both, uh, Council Church. Yeah, and we did have that big discussion before. Uh, and um, so Auckland and Hamilton, I think, still have the same bylaw where they've got dogs on lead in their main centres, and that was a big debate. So since our last review, Turkau has had that um, in the main streets on leads under control. So rather than just differentiating one part of the town, and as you said, um, I'm not sure I think it was Carolyn, sometimes the town centre and the recreational spaces mean you'd have to have on lead, then get in the car and then off lead again, and it's rather than be able to walk them along the street. So Tuakau has been for the last three years or whatever it is, four years, has been um, on lead in the main street. And as far as I'm aware, there's been no issues. I take it that can be. And I, I think that would be picked up presumably somewhere, Tracy, under like nuisance, because even if it's a dog on light lead, we should be protecting 
intimidation or a, a nuisance so that we can report them even if they're under control. But, um, yeah, so I'm comfortable for the po Pocono has had the same thing on lead and to a cow. So that's, we're just rolling that over in the north. Okay, thank you. Two more quick comments, and then we do have to uh, keep moving. Councillor Lynch. Thank you. Um, sorry, Karen, we look out dogs even on leads in the main street of Huntley because we have dog fights and we have, we have definite dog fight setups in the main street of Huntley. And as far as Pukaturini is concerned, the rules say dogs on leads. I have dogs go past my house every day and some of them are really nice, but the majority of them are not on leads. When you've got a guy who's got five dogs and you've got Two young women walking towards her dogs rush them, not saying they're going to bite, but they, it is very intimidating. Not every dog's running at them. And you get more dog bites from Labrador than other breed. People don't like obeying the rules. People think they dog be free to run, especially if they're on a reserve. If you come out to Pukaturini at any time, you will see the vast majority of dogs loose. Okay, thank you. Um, so if I were to try and pick a centre line through this, I think we're saying um, that uh, in spite of an impassioned plea from His Worship, uh, that there is not a strong feeling that we should um, prohibit anywhere else uh, at this time. Does that answer your question? So should we address the... Um, the exercise at the, the, the sports fields areas before we move off this point, Tracy. So what you you're, just want to restate the recommendation here, and I'm conscious we now are halfway through our time. So originally the Farafara Recreation Reserve and Te Kofi Recreation Reserve were off-leash areas. Um, we originally proposed to change them to on-leash areas, but now the direction we seek is uh, are these two join the rest of the Mark Sports Fields in uh, our areas to be prohibited dog areas. Um, and the Takofara Domain, um, Councillor Sedgwick will correct me if I'm wrong, um, the rugby fields up there to push them also into the prohibited dog area as opposed to making that an on-leash area. So should, should we perhaps frame the discussion more widely uh, to start with, which is what is our view on um, dogs on lead on a playing field? So there's no question of dogs being off lead on a playing field anyway. That's already, uh, we've already dealt with that. But what is our feeling in regards to uh, a, a playing surface which might be used for you know, rugby or soccer or, or whatever else? Uh, and dogs on it. I think Councillor Smith, uh, your point is already noted, but I'll come back to you after Councillor Sidley. Oh, thank you very much. I have noticed, uh, again, I'm being parochial, I apologise, but I have noticed on the Tukofora, uh rugby field uh, that people use it to exercise their dogs, uh, which I, I don't agree with. Uh, they also generally take their dogs there when they're watching people play rugby. And I don't have an issue with them, with their dogs on leads while they're watching them play rugby. I have an issue where they're letting them run free and uh, doing what, what worries Councillor Smith. I'm not sure that prohibiting uh, is a good idea, but I think if they're on lead, you have a better chance of people actually picking up after them. When they're running free, they tend to um, look the other way and pretend it's not their dog. Thank you. So I think you're saying uh, you're comfortable with them on playing surfaces, but on lead. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, not on the field themselves, on the sidelines. On the sidelines. Okay. So not on the playing field, but no, yes. I think the playing field should be absolutely sacrosanct. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cedric has just probably taken the words. It's not the fact uh, on playing days, people turn up with their dog on the sideline. They don't let the dog on the field, so that's fine. It's the re rest of the week, um, you know, those fields are used for training or whatever, recreation. But come the sports weekend, uh, Saturday in particular, you should not be having to deal with what's been deposited throughout the week. 
So it's the playing services council said just has just said is sacrosanct. That is the issue for me and for my communities that have asked me to push for no dogs on the sports fields. So, you know, you're not going to stop people. And generally, who you turn up to play, uh, watch uh, on the sideline, and someone's got a dog, it is on a lead, and they keep it off the field. So I've got no problem with that at all. It's that field, and seven days a week, it's protected. Thank you. That's very clear. Thank you, Councillor Maguire. Yeah, I don't want... <clears throat> I'm against having dogs on the playing fields at all. At all. Um, <clears throat> They'll sneak on there uh, behind your back enough without you uh, letting them on there by law. So I'm totally opposed to dogs on sports fields of any description. Right. Thank you. And, and just quickly, Axel, can I Sorry, Councillor Lynch, you'll have to uh, kill your video feed again. Oh, sorry. Quickly, yep. no Canadian geese off leads on playing grounds. Right, so uh, only only when on lead. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Ian. <laughs> thank you. Um, look, I just I'm just aware that you know we're trying to encourage good dog ownership and behaviour here. If um, a family is out and they have a dog with them and they're going to watch their children play rugby on the field, I would much rather that dog be on the sidelines on a lead than actually potentially, potentially being left in a hot car with its windows up. Like we're going to look at the downside as if we're going to prohibit some areas, then what's going to be, where are these dogs going to be left? That's going to be more problematic. I think if I'm hearing the sentiment right, uh, Councillor, yeah, the... Um the uh, there is a, a willingness for, uh, an acceptance that dogs on leads with their owner uh, are very welcome to be standing on the sideline watching uh, somebody play what is uh, what is the sentiment is against is that um, that dog on a lead being walked across the playing surface you know on a mid, mid, middle of the week um, and uh, or, or some other time and um, and on the playing surface itself so it's really the playing surface we're talking about rather than uh, the, the park in general. I've got that right. Um, okay, I think there's a, a consensus here, actually. Um, so uh, treat playing surfaces a bit like we treat playgrounds and, and skate parks, basically. So it becomes a, an extension of it. Including the dead ball areas. Well, as, as marked, isn't it? You know, as, yeah. Again, good signage. I think we'll go a long way towards that, helping that. Well, and this is a change. So, um, you know, the signage will be will be crucial in communicating that. Okay. Um, we are, Tracy, making uh, progress. We've still got some uh, significant ones to come, though. Uh, next, I think, would be the two-dog limit in rural zone. So I've just... Background there. Yes, uh, so we're seeking direction on the exemptions proposed for managing the numbers of dogs on rural backgrounds. So at the previous workshop, it was suggested that um, uh, registered New Zealand Kennel Club breeders be exempt from the restriction to two dogs. Um, the New Zealand Kennel Club is now called Dogs New Zealand. That's just for clarity, because uh, in the memo, we talk about Dogs New Zealand. Uh, and also the, it was also raised that pig dogs be exempt um, for families that are using pig dogs for capturing food. They are in the, it's all set out in the memo, sorry, pardon me. So we're seeking direction on whether the council would like to include Dogs New Zealand breed, registered breeders as an exemption and hunting dogs as an exemption. And you note that animal control is uh, not supportive of, of either. Correct. Thank you. Councillor Sedgman. Thank you. I have a question and a comment. And my question to Tracy is uh, are, <clears throat> pardon me, are breeders captured by any other mechanism within? the permitting system. I 
No. Uh, so they would just be applying for a normal standard permit that anyone else within council can apply for. Because most breeders do have more than two dogs, I, I think. Um, so I don't have a comment on that. In terms of the pig dogs, I think we're giving, we're setting a mission that is very impossible for, you, for animal control to police. Uh, I could quite easily say that the five Labradors that are sitting out the back actually are pig dogs. Um, and, and who are you just to gainsay that? So I, I just don't see, unlike a working dog or unlike a disability dog, they've got a very clear um, description and, and certification. I'd be reluctant to include pig dogs. Thank you, Councillor Ian. Thank you. Just a query when in um, reference to the definition of single dwelling premise, ancillary buildings, is that um, additional houses on the farm? So I'm talking about one farm with potentially three houses. I think Kirsty is going to answer this question through the chair. Yep, there you go, Kirsty. I can indeed. Um, apologies, let me try and take my memory back to it. So the single dwelling, um, oh, give me one second. The single dwelling premises that we're talking about, when you look at the definition of single dwelling premises, um, it's pretty clear that it's one house. Um, and apologies, I'm just trying to bring this up. So my computer is very, very slow. So single dwelling premises are, we've said an area of land which contains residential buildings designed for or occupied exclusively by one household unit. Now that suggests that a parcel of land that has one household unit on it would be that single dwelling premises. Um, we had a lot of, there was a lot of toing and froing between Tracy and I as to how we define this um, for that specific reason, because that, that issue has been raised previously around what about farms where they might have, it might be one title, but they might have, for example, five houses on that title. Um, and so what we've done is saying that it, You'll have one parcel of land. It's not necessarily a title, but it's a parcel um, that has one single dwelling premises on it with one household on it. And so it's kind of saying one household can have two dogs and then working dogs as their exemption. The That's ancillary really buildings, the ancillary buildings um, is things with put there to encompass things like uh, if you had a sleep out, for example, and then they said, well, the sleep out is another dwelling, uh, so we can have two dogs there as well. I appreciate it it's can be quite confusing, but it's literally the only way we could think of to do it. Can we not talk about um, potentially dwellings on a property? That's what we've done. Yeah, but that in a more simplistic manner, because that there is really confusing for that lay person to read. So we also took it as we took our lead effectively from the district plan and how we determine what a residential dwelling is in terms of what a household is. What we don't want is to have people, for example, you might have... Um, a property where you have, say, uh, four or five caravans, and each one of them will say, we are our own household, um, and therefore we are entitled to have two dogs each. And so what we've tried to do here is say, you can have a single premises dwelling, so you can have one dwelling, and all the other ancillary buildings that are around that dwelling are counted as part of that dwelling. Because we do have examples, and Tracy will be able to attest to this, we do have examples of properties where we have a number of tiny homes, for example, or a number of caravans where there could be an argument based on what's of what we've got now 
um, that each each detached dwelling can have two dogs. So just mm. to assist in, the, in, in what I think uh, Councillor here is saying is that in, in the situation of a, of a quite a large property, a farm, for example, which has some some dwellings which are actually some distance away, still mm -hmm. on the title potentially, um, but separately rented out uh, and, um, you know, entirely different family, may, may not even be a farm worker, may just be leased to somebody else. Mm -hmm. are, are they a separate unit or not? Yes. And what about if they're actually working on the farm, if they're employees on the farm? That's still a separate unit. So this was the problem. How, how it yeah. was worded, how it is worded currently in the bylaw does not allow for, because it's per certificate of title. So if you have it as per certificate of title, if you have, for example, and a number of farms are on one certificate of title, if you or, or there's a number of premises, for example, that or a number of dwellings that would be on one certificate of title, you will then be limiting each certificate of title to two dogs and the working so, dogs. Okay, all right. Can I just have clarification? If we have, say, for argument's sake, three cottages on our farm in addition to our own main dwelling, the um, tenants in each of those farm cottages had working dogs and had another dog that might just be a, a pet dog. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be an under the exclusion? Yes. Right. Okay. okay, okay. 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 Thank you. We're going to uh, let's try and wrap this one up. Uh, quick comments only. Councillor McGuire. Quick and yeah, quick. quite happy with what's in there. I still support the pig dogs. I think you're going to bring, give yourself a headache if you don't allow those pig dogs to be uh, part of the deal. And um, in New Zealand kennel um, people will be if you don't include them, they'll be after you. Uh, yeah, they're a difficult lot to deal with at times. Just, just on that, can I just ask about that uh, definition of a breeder as referred to under the Country Living Zone? Uh, that was recommended. It sits in the uh, in the report. So what that refers to is that currently, with our current permitting system, if there is a breeder, which we do have a few of that live in the current country living zone, they are required to obtain a permit to hold more than two dogs on that property. So our breeders in the rural zone would do, follow the same process. And that's a process that's administered by council. It's not one that relies on anything to do with dogs in Zealand? Correct. And are you saying that that could be workable for breeders uh, across the district? It, it could be. Yes, I think it is. Uh, I do uh, agree with Councillor Maguire that we will get uh, a number of submissions on it if we do not include Dogs New Zealand registered breeders. However, I also have grave concerns after my conversation that it's a backdoor for some of our hoarding situations to um, have a be an, under an exemption. So could you do both? So require a, a registration with Dogs New Zealand and our process, and our process being the most, you know, you can't apply to us until you've got it, got it from them kind of process. Kirsty, waving or drowning? Waving oh, and drowning, just quietly. Um, I think the issue here is that all you, literally all you have to do with Dogs New Zealand is pay a fee and yeah. you become a breeder. Yeah. Um, now, if we do that, and everyone, and we do have, unfortunately, the, those people within our district who will see this as, well, who, look, I can just pay, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks a year, well worth it. I think what we're trying to do is, and I appreciate with you saying, look, if you are a Dogs New Zealand member, then you can apply for a permit. Um, that's, and I'm assuming that's what you're meaning. Um, so, so can I clarify? What I mean yes. is we already have a process by which we approve. Yeah. I, I assume that there is some rigour with that and that just like to be a good breed, a good owner or something, you somebody actually comes and looks at your property, et cetera, et cetera. We have a process. What, yeah. what I was suggesting is you pay your 200 bucks to Dogs New Zealand and that makes you eligible to apply for our process and our process can be as difficult as we like. 
No. I don't think we have that now. And the issue we have is that you may get, uh, for example, people who don't necessarily want to be a registered breeder under Dogs New Zealand. Mm. Um, that's an additional thing that we were we require. So our process is our process. We send our guys out to do it. Tracy can can clarify what Dog New Zealand do, but I think we're. I, I think in doing that, we're separating them too much. I think we're putting too much. There well, will be a number of people who would say that it would be too onerous. What, what I'm asking, I guess, sorry if I'm not being clear. What I'm asking is there appears to be a process currently working for us okay in a country living zone environment. I, ca I can foresee that be a significant pushback if nowhere in the district, um, you know, in, in rural zone, could you have more than two dogs? I could see there being pushback on that. Can we? Is there some way that staff can see a process that works? They they can all so they will be able to apply for a permit. They the the do, the default position will be you can only have two dogs unless they're working dogs, yeah. um, or unless you apply for a permit. If you are a breeder, for example, you can apply for a permit through the process that we've already got in place right. that they already do in the country living zone. That process would then effectively be um, rolled out throughout the district, irrespective of what zone you're in. And, and staff are comfortable with that that's manageable operationally? Yeah. Yes, Tracy. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, um, definitely. Uh, and you're right, it, it consists of a property inspection to ensure that we are picking up those people who shouldn't be in possession of more than two dogs. Okay. Just, can I also just clarify, apologies, Chair, can I also just clarify in terms of the pig dog um, issue, it was my view that if we if we are considering the pig dog issue, that that be expanded to hunting dogs generally, rather than a, a specification of just a pig dog, um, because I think if we're going to go down that road, it would be easier to go down that road via the hunting dog uh, definition that we have in our current bylaw. Uh, rather than trying to split it out, because you'll have, you know, duck shooters who will say, well, I, my dogs are, are hunting dogs, they're just not pig dogs. Um, not that we're supportive of that, but I just sort of wanted to clarify that. And the other thing is it wouldn't be an exclusion of pig dogs. It would be by resolution of council to include hunting or hunting dogs. It would be a, by resolution of council to include hunting dogs within the definition of working dogs. Okay. So that was the suggestion at the last workshop. Thank you, that's clear. Right, so we've got a number of hands up. Council Lynch. Um, thank you. Um, so just Carolyn's conversation just sort of brought something to mind. So with housing intensification in urban areas, in um, in some terms, Kaingora can build three blocks, three storeys high on a section, and each one has a um, dog. How, how will that work? So, I, it's my understanding that that would be captured under, um, except as follows, multi-unit housing and proper Kaingora housing where owners may have one dog per household. Would that housing be classed as multi-unit housing? Yeah, I think it yeah, could be, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that oh. would restrict them to one dog so that's per each, household. So each, each household can have one dog each? Yes. So in I theory... Would, I would classify that as multi-unit housing. Yeah. So in theory, that could be like 20 dogs. Potentially, if there's... On 20, one section. Yes, if there's 20 buildings on one section or 20 apartments. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, just getting back to uh, houses of, can we not use the Huey? I think I've asked this before as a as a way of defining a property. With can you repeat that? Sorry. Oh well, we use Hueys, you know, um, house equivalents or something. When you and so you pay rates according to your Huey. Uh, can we not use that as to say, well, like say you got three or four houses on your property? It doesn't matter whether you know you use the Huey to recognise as people living on the property. I'm not sure. I haven't heard that description of housing. Sorry, I can Kirsty, uh, can you comment on that? 
I think I think it's doable, but I think the issue then becomes again uh, complicated. It, it, it does become quite complicated, and we. Tracy and I did angst over this for quite a long period of time, I have to say, around how do we determine premises, how do we determine dwellings, because of that whole issue around you have farms, they have a number of dwellings, they might not all be clearly on separate titles, they might not all be, you know, one might be up one driveway and one's up another driveway. So we we really did, like I say, angst over this for a really long period of time. This was the... To us, this was the clearest way of doing it, um, bearing in mind that if we do get a number of submissions from the public who say, this is outrageous, we don't, this doesn't make sense, how can we clarify it, then maybe we have to go back to the drawing board. Um, but I guess I'm also mindful of the timing of this as well, so... No, that, no, that's fine. That, that's fine. And then the other point I had, like at, at first, I thought, "Oh, two dogs." That seems a bit harsh. But I think that if um, people want more than two dogs, and you, and it becomes a normal, it then means that the dog inspectors are actually visiting properties regularly. So when they're visiting, they're seeing other properties, and then we would actually uh, capture people that are, are not registered with their dogs. And so I actually think it's a good thing that anyone who's got more than two dogs, whether registered breeder or not then get uh, a visit and that's only a good thing because then you see where they're capable of having more than more than two dogs and we'll just tie up a whole lot of things um again i don't know what the workload's like for the the staff but surely it's, it's not a big job just to call another way past to have a look at a property see what um what what, what yeah what, what's there and and it would surely solve solve a lot of, a lot of problems so it just becomes a one rule more than two dogs you get a visit Thank you. Yeah, no, Sarah's always saying uh, the extra capacity they have in their team. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Um, I go back to something that's enshrined in case law in relation to alcohol licensing. To have a license is a privilege. It's not a right. And the ownership of dogs and the correct housing and, and ownership um, is, is it's a privilege. It's not an automatic right, And in my view. So the, with that comes some limitations. Um, if we look at an example that the um, regulatory committee dealt with uh, 12, 18 months ago, we had uh, 35 odd dogs uh, owned by one uh, outfit in, in, in a rural location out of Huntley. They were in the most appalling state uh, that we had seen. And those dogs were just being farmed uh, to breed and, and probably sell on, in my view. Um, I won't go into too much detail because it was quite graphic and, and ugly. Uh, but those are those are people who should have been um, dealt with by way of a maximum of two, and probably, in my view, probably shouldn't have been owners. Um, and I don't need Tracy or others to go into it. But the reality is, if you're going to have more than two dogs, you've got to have a permit. And I don't think that we should be outsourcing our work to uh, Dogs New Zealand who have got a, a different interest in dogs than what the council is regulated to do. Their interest is about breeding and uh, selling their dogs and uh, getting a better name for themselves so they can sell more. Council is, is more about the safety of our community and the safe housing welfare type for our, our dogs are in the community. So for me, um, I think it's essential that one, we retain it in-house, two, that it's a permit uh, over that uh, and I just can't quite remember what the other issue that, uh, but you know, it's one way for our staff to see where dogs are being homed, not outsourcing to a third party, uh, and you lose control with that. As I go back to my first point, the ownership of a dog is a privilege, it's not a right. Thank you. Right. So, uh, just before I come to you, Captain Sedgwick, so I think we've actually got a fairly united stance on the two dog limit. Uh, and that exceptions be done through our own process as is currently used in the country living zone. Perhaps you may want to look at that and make sure that it's, uh, you know, is working well before we uh, nail our flag to that particular mast. Uh, what I did not hear is consistency in view on the hunting dogs slash pig dogs. We have, I've had contrary views uh, expressed so uh, Councillor Sedgwick, could you speak to that uh, and, and, and briefly, because we're actually out of time and we've got three more matters. 
Um, absolutely. I don't think we should be giving our um, animal control team uh, or putting them in a position where they have to decide what the genre of dog is. Um, so I'm very much uh, not in, not in favour of including hunting and pig dogs. Uh, and my other point, which I was going to make, um, was that uh, within this policy, there is also an education section, which I don't think actually should be sitting in a policy itself. It could be perhaps as an addendum, because it's not measurable, uh, it's not policy, and it can't be um, monitored. That's very useful. Thank you, uh, Councillor Smith, just on the topic of hunting dogs. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, that was the point that I was trying to recall. Um, absolutely against uh, expanding the uh, commonly understood definition of working dogs. You've got the guide dogs, you've got the dog assist dogs, and you've got your farm dogs, um, and there's other which generally accepted common working dogs. You bring in uh, the issue of any old dog, it becomes a, um, a pig dog, uh, and then it puts our, count, our council staff in a terrible position of high, trying to decide whether someone's lying or not. Pig dogs, absolutely not. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Councillor McGuire, you always already registered your support for hunting and pig. Uh, I have, yeah, and I still do. So um, I, <clears throat> I haven't changed my mind. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's too difficult to identify hunting dogs. Um, in any way, shape or form, I think it's pretty clear cut and um, I wouldn't have any trouble identifying hunting dogs personally. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Well, Would you bet the farm on it? Because I took it to the test. Let's keep moving. We're uh, uh, really out of time already. Councillor, yeah? Yeah, no, look, I agree with Councillor Maguire. I'm in support of um, having hunting dogs included as well, as well as the breeding. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kirsty, your comment on uh, being able to permit is noted. Anything else? Uh, no, I was just going to clarify that, that we could have a permit um, option for hunting dogs as well as a breeding option. And I wonder if um, it may be um, beneficial to point out, and I can't remember whether we've got it in our permits, um, whether it would be beneficial to point out in our permit section um, that you know, uh, breeders and hunting dogs, for example, would be matters where council would consider um, the issuing of permits, dependent on the owner obviously passing all of the requisite um, standards for our permit process. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Henderson? Yes, I support um, a permit idea for the hunting dogs. All right, thank you. Well, I've got two truffle hunting dogs at my feet right now. You might hear the occasional snore, so I take it they'll be included as well, truffle hunting, right? Um, <laughs> so uh, I think actually the consensus I've heard is uh, that uh, a permitted exception uh, is finding favour. So um, I don't know, that's, that's the propon preponderance of those who have spoken have said that, so... Can we take a poll? Um... Right, that's fair enough. Let's do that. Let's do a, um, a quick uh, straw poll. Uh, so those that think that by a permitted process, uh, you could, uh, we could include hunting slash pig dogs. So yes to hunting and pig. Put your hand up, please. Can you do that through the uh, reactions, uh, Axel, through the thumbs up? Uh, if you wish. All right. So a thumb Thumbs up or a hand up for yes, hunting pig dogs. Can I ask one question before you move to that though? Yes. My, my mind's been on two screens, I'm sorry. So I've been listening, but not sort of picking it all up. So what's the alternative? Uh, that, that, uh, that they become just part of your two dog maximum, that you can't have additional dogs because they're um, a special class of dog, like a working dog or a, a farm dog. Mm. You either include pig dogs as um, working dogs or not, Alan, that's, and hunting dogs. That, that's the okay. question. Uh, Tracy? I was just going to ask a clarification around, so um, you in discussing pig dogs permitting, that, that we just have the one permit process that... Anybody who wants more than two dogs, if they're not a working dog, goes through the one permit process. 
effectively. Yeah. 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 Can I can I just ask a question of Tracy and the team? How look, it's easy for us as politicians to put them, put our thumbs up, yes, no, and all that sort of thing. But actually in reality, how workable is this for you, Tracy? Or are we just buying into a uh, what I call a proverbial fight? Uh, in all honesty, um, we have a, a, a lot of dog owners on rural properties, rural zone properties with more than two dogs that are not currently working dogs that would need to apply for permits retrospectively and we would need to visit. It would create a, a fair summer work over the next um, whatever time frame we gave them to do it. I do believe that we will get a number of submissions around this proposed change uh, if that is what council decides today to put into the bylaw um, I think that's a good way to gauge our community as well I, I just also I am very concerned about what we're seeing on the street with what we can't enforce on and the welfare of the dogs in the situations that we're seeing currently and so what then is your preference Pardon, sorry. What were you saying is your preference? I would like to see animal control officers visiting properties, giving permits. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I was looking for, Tracy, because it's, as I said to you, it's easy for us to sit here and think we know it all. Uh, in actual fact, we know bugger all because you're the one on the front line, not us. So it's, it's actually making sure that you're supported in some way. And secondly, from those in the regulatory position who have to support or review what staff are, have done and get challenged on, we need the bylaw to be unambiguous. I, th I think it would be useful, like talking about the permit, if you had, like, if the permit was quite um, generally worded that anybody wanting to have more than two dogs um, and they didn't meet the definition of a working dog could apply for a permit um, and then you'd have a range of reasons and then that way you're not stipulating hunting or pig dogs or anything it's just anybody who wants more than two dogs they just apply for a permit and you might want to keep the cost of that permit really low so that's not a barrier to people I mean it might be someone whose mother's died and they've just you know taken on her dog you know so does it just happen to give them three dogs um you know, and you, then you've got a chance to check the well-being of those dogs, the way they've been cared for. Um, they're not just in cages 23 hours a day and, you know, that they're being well looked after. It's an opportunity to make sure they're meeting the animal welfare provisions and that they are, they're, um, are capable of caring for more than two dogs. But keeping it general, not specifying, it's, you know, permits for hunting or um pig dogs because whatever if you specify groups you always miss out someone and um whereas it keep it broad and then people state the reason why they want more than two dogs then that can be um you can judge that on your some assessment criteria okay can you put the question please well i uh, just want to hear from kirsty first so just to clarify the the permit option is available to anybody but i wonder if it's worthwhile for example, at the start of um, section 12 of the bylaw, we can put a blurb in there that says any person, something along the lines of any person who wishes to have more than two dogs may make an application to the council to keep more than two dogs. Um, and then something along the lines of though those people will then be subject to the, the normal uh, permit process that's available to us. Um, I just wanted to expand on what Tracy had said around um, we are we are a appreciative of the fact that this this removal of the the or, or the addition of the rural zone um, into the restriction of two dogs does make it more difficult for uh, Tracy in the short term or Tracy and her team in terms of they will then have to go out and inspect and you know uh, people will have to apply for permits however I think from a legal perspective um, and Councillor Smith will will be able to attest to this as well our hands are really tied as an organisation because we have, and we are really aware of so many examples of uh, people who reside in our rural areas or in the rural zones who have an extraordinary number of dogs. Um, those dogs are not necessarily kept in good condition. They are not kept in uh, a great um, 
in great areas, you know, that they're, they're not cared for, they're not dogs that are you, you and I would normally consider as, as family pets, um, they are certainly not working dogs. At the moment, from a legal perspective, we have no ability to limit these number of dogs at all. All we can do is ask those people to have their dogs registered. Um, this, this proposed change actually came from legal as a means for us to be able to enforce, unfortunately, what is probably a, a small minority, as we keep saying with these bylaws, to be able to enforce a small minority um, and make sure that we can do something about it because at the moment we can't. Uh, so that's just something to bear in mind. If they are genuine owners and they genuinely do want to have more than two dogs, then we, what we're doing is giving them the option. We're inviting them to come in, um, apply for permits for more than two dogs. It, I can't remember whether we're clear in the bylaw or whether it's in the policy, but we have proposed that if you have more than two dogs currently, you can apply for that permit free of charge. Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, for the first year or two or something like that, um, so that we're kind, we're leading them into it gently and we're saying, look, we know it's a change. We know that you might not like it, but the reality is, is that we need something in place to be able to enforce. Yeah, I'd absolutely endorse that. I think we've had plenty of discussion on this now. Uh, sorry, Karen, I'll, I'm just going to go straight to a show of hands, please. So with the position now outlined, which is basically, we're not talking about hunting or whatever, in particular, we're just saying, if you wish to have more than two dogs, uh, you will need to go through a permit process of our devising. Uh, are we supportive of that direction? Please use your emoji um, or hands up, thumbs up, if you support that position. Okay, that's that's a goer. Okay, so that's done. Right, let's keep moving. Uh, we've got three to go, and we're already over time. So, Tracy, the next one is a proposed dog exercise area at Martangi. I think we were more just providing information around that. Um, the, uh, further conversation with Open Spaces team, we are withdrawing that proposal. So the Martangi Reserve will not be an off-leash park. Okay. Councillor McGuire, did you have a comment on that? Quite happy with that. Okay. Good. Let's not uh, look gift horse in the mouth then. Let's go to uh, the Te Awa uh, in Tamahiri. So in regards to that, um, we would like to amend the dog exercise area to cover the flat grassy area at the top. Um, we went to open spaces team. There's no current funding to be able to fence off the playground. Uh, we will look to put it in the next LTP, which unfortunately, as we know, is approximately two and a half years away. Um, and other investigation into other land in the area hasn't led us to an area that could be used as an off-leash park. So which other areas did you look at? Um, Jack Foster Reserve... And we discussed um, the Tamahiri Park, uh, including the, I think it's the overflow hall parking uh, yeah. as oh, potentially yeah. an area to be used for off-leash park during certain hours or when, the, when it's not being used. Um, did, you look, did you look at the, to your knowledge, did they look at the old Regal Haulage washdown area at the top of the tea, um, Tamahiri Reserve? No, to best of my knowledge, no, we did not look at that. Okay. Uh, Sue, you had your hand up? Um, yes, I've recently, as last week, just sent another email through to your team about that area, and it'll be interesting to note why the area by the hall wasn't suitable, because our community is definitely very much behind having another area and it would be really helpful if we could um, could find this area. I'm sure with heads together we would be able to. Um, it would be particularly good if that could come out in this proposal. The, dog, the, the old truck wash area certainly is um, a separate type area and um, could, could lend itself. 
I guess the, the question is, uh, uh, Tracy, just for clarity, so are you saying um, exclude the Te Awa area that's slumping into the river and replace it with the flat, flat grassy area at the top or, or add the flat grassy area on top to the slumping area? We have proposed removing the eroded area uh, due to the the rabbit control as well and the rabbit holes uh, and that there's poison laid down there. Uh, however, we'd be open to um, maintaining that as an off-leash area if people did want it. It is very curious when you go down there and there's lots of signs to say, not, not let your dog explore this area because we've just laid poison uh, and it's the only off-leash area we have. Anyway, that's a subject for another day. So what, what's the way forward here? Because I think, Sue, you were saying that there is community desire to have an area. Um, and I think, Tracy, you're saying the area we have uh, available or already identified uh, can't, in effect, be used because of the playground and no uh, funding to fence off anything. So catch-22, what's, what's the same way? Uh, I would definitely be interested in investigating the uh, truck washdown area. Um, I can go to open spaces and have that conversation with them in regards to that space. Um, if uh, somebody can, sorry, point out to me where it is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can certainly do that. Thank uh, you too. Kirsty? Um, just wanted to remind everybody that we are on a really, really tight schedule with this one. Uh, in terms of having to have it out for consultation and approved by early next year. Um, and the consultation process is will, will have to, is unfortunately going to have to be over Christmas. So I'm wondering if that uh, additional area perhaps be something that can be dealt with outside of this bylaw process. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be part of it as far as I'm aware. Um, I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy for it to be if we can have it from our time framing perspective. But I'm just mindful of not having that issue uh, sort of derail the very tight time frame that we already have. So I'm wondering if it can go sort of in parallel or perhaps as an additional. Uh, and I get suggesting, and I'm trying. I'll try very hard not to sound grumpy like the local uh, parochial councillor. Um, that there is an, a, a very obvious area, which is council owned, it is a reserve, and for some reason it hasn't been looked at. Um, it has no other purpose. It's actually fenced off and, and is not used for anything currently. Um, so the fact that it hasn't been looked at is, you know, is an oversight, I think. Um, but in any event, um, uh, we are looking at a change in Tamahiri. We're looking at taking something away. Uh, so I think if we're buying ourselves a fight, if we haven't looked at the obvious areas we could add in, that'd be more Excellent. Some of our bylaws have got a mechanism where council, by way of resolution, can add to a schedule. So if we were to utilise that process in this um, bylaw, that we could then, with a parallel process, add it in, even if it's after a month or two or three after the bylaw actually is finalised. Um, and I see Kirsty nodding. Okay, thank you. I'll come to Hannah and then back to you, sir. Uh, mute, unmute. Um, we are able to add an additional dog exercise areas through council resolution. In this particular instance, I feel confident that we would be able to look at the reserve and add it in if it's appropriate before the policy and regulatory meeting on the 24th of November. So I don't think um, it should affect timeframes too much. Okay, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Sue? I just wanted to add, um, with us talking about the 10 metre from playground areas, is that still envisaged with the Tiawa dog park? Because that that's a real problem in saying, oh, yes, Tamahiri, you can use the, the, the dog park down there, but there is a playground right on the same site and it just seems quite unworkable really if we're now limited to people having their dogs up on the flat but where the playground is and they can't go off walking down the, the other part where the erosion is because there is still a path down there and I just wonder how, how difficult it would be for council to actually 
fix part of that so that it still was suitable. At least that would get dogs away from the playground. I think, well, we, we abandoned the 10 metre thing earlier anyway, um, but <laughs> the point is that it's going to be difficult for dogs and kids to coexist on that top area without a fence. Mm. And the council is saying we don't have the money to fence in this LTP cycle. So I think our best bet is uh, a quick look at, uh, at that uh, washdown area and some understanding as to the why the overflow parking area was not was not suitable. And as Hannah says, very optimistically, we can do so six month. So I'm, I'm happy to, um, if someone wants to contact me to come out for a site visit to take you around or whatever is necessary. Appropriately socially distanced, of course. Of course. Of course. Okay, thank you. I think that's a resolution on there. So we've got two more to go. Sorry that we're uh, over time. Um, well, sorry, one more to go, which is signage at dog exercise areas and dogs prohibited areas. Yeah, so I think we had a very strong theme earlier that our signage uh, currently is, is not um, sufficient in numbers uh, to, and, and uh, not well enough placed that people actually understand. I think our new rules are simpler and, and clearer. I mean, we're basically just saying where well, you can't uh, now, in, in, in effect. Um, so what's the, um, what else do you need to know, Tracy, for, for this point? Uh, no, we were just um, making that clear that from a previous question that signage was going to be installed at Kofata Domain and that we will review signage requirements following the adoption of the bylaw to change what needs to be changed and make try and make it as clear as possible in conjunction with the open spaces team. I think also what you've heard, in fact, one of the comments just now, but what you've heard through comments throughout is that, that people by natural expectation see a big green playing field and let their dogs run that they let it off the leash and run. And um, and in fact, we're saying it can't even be there on lead. So that's, that's different to their expectation. So we need to be um, more generous with our signage um, because otherwise um, we're going to have some fisticuffs <laughs> as, um, you know, as, as people have different interpretation in their heads of the rules. Do we have budget for signage? Obvious question in council terms. Sarah, please nod. <laughs> Sarah's not nodding. Um, we have some budget, um, but we'll, we'll do a proper review, figure out what it's going to cost um, and what we can get for the money, and we'll review it properly at that point. There's some money, but it's in Tracy's budget, so it you know, wasn't specifically budgeted for, but we'll probably make it work. But I think there's a serious point here because I think consistently we've said, you know, we, we're, we're acting somewhat against people's natural expectations without really knowing. So we need to, to assist them in the understanding by use, use of signage. Understood. Okay. Hannah? Uh, yes, I have spoken with um, open, the open space team around signage. I provided them with a list of expected changes based on the proposed changes for the areas. They have said that they do have budget, I think it's around 1500 to 2000 to make those changes to the sign. If we propose anything additional based on this workshop, there might be other changes required. Um, I'd need to talk to them to confirm about budget for that. But they are aware of this process and the general feedback about signage more generally. Yeah, cool. All right, now I think that's that's clear, and I think I think the the message is that there will be additional signs, not just stickers over top of existing signs required. Is, is the message I'm hearing? So the appropriate process for um, seeking budget approval should commence behind the scenes that no elected member will ever understand. So you guys can go away and figure that out. Right, and Tracy, are you intending to finish with a dead parrot sketch um, number seven? Or are you just informing us? No, uh, just uh, it, it was a change. So I wanted it noted in the uh, memo so that everybody was aware around the death certificate. Right. Not dead, only resting. Right. OK, so with that, we'll, um, uh, with apologies for going over, we'll uh, wrap it up, I think. Uh, am I getting nods from the team? That's all you need. 
Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. It was uh, a long day, Mayor Allen. A lot of workshops today, <laughs> um, but we got there. Yeah, a real long day today. Um, but never mind. Um, so that's right. Good outcome. Got sorted out. We got there this yeah. afternoon. Hell of a long day, but we got there. It wasn't too difficult. See what four um, o'clock says. What's yeah, that? Right. See, see what four o'clock says. Yeah, I better give you a hand.